Did you just buy a new trailer and you're not sure exactly how to hitch it up properly and you're a little nervous? Well, I'm going to show you how simple it is to hook up your trailer to your tow vehicle in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back, everybody. Well, if you're new to our channel, please make sure you take time to hit that subscribe button and also hit the little bell right beside of it. That way you'll get notified every time we post a new video. We guarantee a new video every Monday and lately it seems like we've been doing every Wednesday as well. So make sure you don't miss any of our videos and subscribe and hit that little bell. All right, on to this week's video. Many of you have requested that I do a short video on how to properly hitch up your trailer. Now, I don't consider myself an expert in anything, but I have been traveling with a travel trailer now for over 10 years, and hitching it up to me is just second nature. It's just something I just do, I don't really think about. But I do remember thinking back of the very first time I hitched up and how nervous I was, and I had a lot of questions about where does the chain go, and what's that extra cable for, and you know, all those questions that you may be having. So let's go ahead and hitch up Carl, our Tab 400 by New Camp, to our tow vehicle, a 2014 Toyota 4Runner. Now, first thing we're gonna need to do is go ahead and get the hitch put onto the tow vehicle. So let's go do that right now. Before I start hooking up, doing anything, I bring up these jack stands. That way when I go to raise my trailer, the back end of the trailer is going to tip this way and I don't want to bend these stabilizers. So let's go ahead and get them up. I'm using this little bit that I ordered off of Amazon. You can find the link to it down in the description along with my cordless drill. It makes this process a lot quicker. Now that our stabilizers are up, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the trailer. Now I do put a lock on the ball and I also have a second lock which is my pin lock which I use when I'm towing as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get this completely undone and it helps if you remember where the lock is. And I'm going to pull that pin when I lift up that rest of that lock for that ball mount is is uh, free now so you can see this just works where it goes up into the ball and then it locks on into place so we have that as well as in lieu of a pin i have a locking pin and again i use that when i'm towing so now we can set those aside and i've got the latch in the up position and now i'm going to begin raising the trailer up and you want to try to get it up above where the ball on your tow vehicle is going to be so that it can slide right under and then we can drop the trailer down. If you have an electronic jack stand, well, then you don't have to do the cranking. Just use your button and lift your trailer up. Okay, let's go ahead and start backing up. Now I like to go real slow and I use my rear view camera on the forerunner to help me line it up once i start getting real close if i'm by myself then i'm just going to go real slow until i'm perfectly under or slightly close now if there's two of you i put down the windows and patty would help guide me in i'd still be using my rear view camera but having that person stand out there and give you vocal commands helps tremendously now that we're close let's go ahead and drop the trailer onto the hitch. One final reminder before we get out, I like to put my emergency brake on so that I don't roll. The nice thing about a lightweight small trailer is you don't usually have to be perfect. 
because you can actually just let it go down and it'll slide on. And if you get lucky, it'll drop down just like that. Now, if you're running weight distribution with your trailer, at this point, you would wanna go ahead and latch, lift the trailer back up to take some of the weight off, hook up your weight distribution bars. With our Tab 400, I don't run weight distribution, so I can go ahead and just latch it up, and we can go ahead and bring our jack stand up. That's gonna go ahead and put the weight onto the tow vehicle. I should add, if you can't get your latch to actually go down into the locked position, and that's fairly common, I have it happen all the time. What I'll typically do is I'll get back in my tow vehicle and just put it into, let's say, forward. I don't even give it gas and just kind of let the car pull forward just a little bit. That tends to loosen it up, and then I'll come back and try it again. If that doesn't work, then I'll try it the opposite way. I'll put it in reverse and just allow the weight of the car to kind of push back. And then usually one of those two will allow you to push that down and lock it into place. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my jack stand all the way up for towing purposes. Next, you never want to forget to put your pin in, and so I'm going to go ahead and unlock mine. And again, you may not use a locking pin. You could use just a regular pin that goes through, but I kind of like this one because, again, this isn't going to necessarily keep them from stealing the trailer, but it's at least going to maybe deter them because they're going to realize they're going to have to take a little bit of extra time. They can't just uh, uh, pop it open and take it off. All right, the next thing I do is I go ahead and get my chains on. Now, with your chains, let's go ahead and pull this out. I'm gonna go ahead and hitch them to my tow vehicle. And we wanna make sure that our chains are actually crossing, okay? So notice how here they create almost an X, and that's what we want. Now, if your chains are too long, that's not a problem. Just pull it back off, begin twisting your chain just a, you know, a couple times, and that'll take some of the slack out. So if you need to bring those chains up so that they're not rubbing on the ground. Next, I'm gonna plug in my brakes and my lights. Now, your tow vehicle should have a place to plug in. Mine is up under here, and it just slides right in. The other thing that I do as a backup is one time I had this come loose and didn't realize it had no lights, no brakes. So I found these little rubber ties. They have just thin metal in them coated by rubber. I just kind of wrap that around where I plugged in and around my light switch and it just kind of holds it in place. Just actually a backup precaution. The last thing I need to do is hook up my breakaway brake controller. What this does is, if your trailer were ever to break free, this is gonna pull and it's gonna pop the controlling device, which is gonna lock up the brakes on the trailer so your trailer isn't going the opposite direction of you. Now, there's different ways you can hook this up and you can find videos on it. But with the Tab 400, it actually comes with a fairly short cable. The key is you do not want it hanging below your chains. So with ours, I can actually just use a carabiner um, and I'm actually in the process of replacing the original one. I lost the original one, which was stainless steel, and I have to get a new one. But um, what we don't want is it hanging real low. So if it is hanging too low, a real simple technique is just to go ahead and put another little loop in the actual cable, and then run it through where you attached your chains, and then just hook your your hook to that. Now you don't want it so tight that if you go to make a turn that um, it's gonna lock you up. So it's one of those things where you're gonna have to do some fine tuning with it. You want it loose enough that it has some play, but yeah, you don't want it so loose that it's not gonna work. Right. We also need to make sure we hook up our sway bar. Now I keep my sway bar on my trailer at all times. I just have it hooked with here with one of those larger twisty ties. Again, it has kind of a metal center, it's wrapped in, in a rubber, and then I just put that back on when I'm towing, twist it around a few times. So I'm gonna unloosen my, 
friction sway bar. Ooh. We like to call it mo Moni Myrtle. It makes a lot of noise when you're towing, especially when you're turning in a parking lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna slip it over the little ball that's on my hitch, and then I'm gonna pop that pin through to keep it in place. It was already attached to the trailer, so all I have to do now is tighten it up. Now I'll just hand tighten it. If we're out on the road and I feel like maybe there's a little bit of sway, then at the next stop, I'm gonna put another turn on it. I actually think you can over tighten these. So I always say, you know, go to hand tight and then see how it does. Also, a word of caution on friction sway bars. If you're gonna be backing your trailer up, if you're backing straight up, it's not really an issue. But when you're putting your camper into a camp spot and you're gonna to have to be making turns, I highly recommend that you go ahead and take the sway bar off the trailer because you can bend these when you're backing up. So again, if you know if you just need to kind of back it up in a parking lot and you're going straight back, you're fine. But if you're gonna be doing some turning or cranking hard to get into a campsite, make sure we get the sway bar off. All right. Now let's do a light check. Now it's easiest if there's two of you to do this because obviously one can be in the tow vehicle while the other one stands at the rear of the trailer. But Patty's not here right now, so what I'm having to do is just run between the tow vehicle and the back of the trailer and I'm checking to see if things like my turn signals are working properly. If they are, then we should be good to go. The other thing we'll check is when we crawl back in the tow vehicle is we'll check our brake controller to make sure it's showing there's power to the trailer. We can see that our tow vehicle brake controller is showing power because of the double zeros and when I press down it shows that we're applying brake. So we are set to go. There you have it. We're all hitched up and ready to go. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down below in the comment box and I'll try to respond with answers as quickly as I can. Don't be intimidated, take your time, make a list, and just go through that checklist each time. Eventually you'll be like me, and it'll just become second nature and part of everyday life when you're traveling with your travel trailer. Until next time everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Good night.